cleaning the sensor on your camera isn't hard, it's a necessity, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rusty Brown Photography. I am Rusty, so glad you guys are here. Let me start off by saying Happy, Happy New Year. I haven't seen you, I haven't talked to you at all in 2022. This is my first video of the year. So, you know, I have to tell you, Happy New Year. And I hope everybody's crushing it uh, in this new year. Although we're, what, just days away from June. So, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about a couple of things. First, I'm going to show you how easy it is to clean your sensor. There are a lot of myths uh, around cleaning a sensor. And today we're going to dispel most of those. I'll walk you through how to get rid of sensor dust on your sensors. Uh, two different types, um, your, your, your full size sensor, which I'm gonna demonstrate today. And then the process is the same for your APS sensors, but uh, the equipment that you use is slightly different because your sensor on an APS-C model is a little bit smaller. So first, let's identify what sensor dust is. It's when you come up and you see an image and you see spots and you see those spots on the same place of your, of your image, no matter what's going on within the image, you have sensor dust. There are many different ways to determine if you have it, uh, shooting against a, a white piece of paper, a couple of other methodologies, but I'm just gonna use what I call the eye test. I'm gonna show you a couple of images uh, that I've taken that had these spots on them. And what I've been doing up to now is just getting rid of them in post. I don't think that's the method we should rely on. I think if we, if we keep the sensors clear of this stuff most of the time, there's less opportunity for damage and clearly less work you have to do in post. So for me, I use the eye test. With that, let me show you what lens dust looks like um, on my camera. So I'm gonna bring up Lightroom real quick and I'm gonna show you a couple of series of, of images. First of all, for me, um, the sensor dust shows up more prominently when there is a wall behind my subjects. So if you look carefully at this image and I'll enlarge it, you'll see these circles here, here, I'll go back out all the way on the left side of the frame. These spots are sensor dust on my frame. Now if you follow the images here with, um, with Doug and Jamie, watch the spots and watch how the the two models move, right? Different shots, but the sensor dust stayed in the same place. Again, different shot, no change in the sensor dust. Fourth shot of this set, same thing. So when your image changes because of the people that are in it or what you're shooting, but you see these look like little circles, that's sensor dust on your lens. Um, looking at it, with just Jamie, you can see it a little more prominently here. What I was doing on this wall was making the wall a little bit gray. And you can tell from the lighting. So you, and you can really see the sensor does here. Again, left side of the frame to there, all over the middle. On the right, uh, you can zoom in on these guys and you can see them. Some of them are very light, like here next to the stool. A little darker all around the edges here. If I move this around, you see sensor does. Right here, perpendicular to the small of her back, up here on the left, one up here by the toe. Sensor dust everywhere. So as you watch the model in the middle of the shot, also I want you to watch the sensor dust on both sides and see if you see a difference. We'll go to the next frame. Now she's looking at us, but the sensor dust is exactly the same. Now we're doing similar poses, but in this case I'm doing them in portrait mode. Don't have as many you know, references for sensor dust, but they are still there. This one over top of her toe was the one that was way out here before, but she's changed her pose a little bit. So even here, you can see sensor dust is everywhere. We go to the next frame, a different shot, same sensor dust. Same here, up close, you got it there, it's not going away. Here is one that's back to uh, landscape, and if you look closely, some of it's very light at the top, and you remember those two that are very prominent on the left side of the frame? They're here. Over on the right, a little bit light. 
You may remember the one we talked about before next to the stool. Yep, and if you look even closer, there's one right there next to her wrist that we didn't see before. So what I was doing in post is removing them so that it would look like this. Right? So that's the same image edited, but now you don't see the spots. Even the tape on the floor going back to the original, you know, obviously you would, you would clean those things up anyway, but these added spots just take you more time. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to here is if you look at over here on the right side, you can see, you know, when this was shot. And this was over three years ago, and I still have censored us. So this is 100% on me. Because if we move to the next couple of images, here on the red wall, you can see it just as much. Now, look over here on the right. In this case, we're talking about June of last year. And the sensor dust is very prominent at the top. Different shades of darkness, but those circles are everywhere, even on the right side. So I'm looking at straight, unedited images here. These on the bottom are just nicks in the wall. I would fix those either way. But when you look at all of the different bits of sensor dust, it just continues to collect, you know, on that sensor. Let's do the same thing again, roll through a couple of shots, watch the wall, pose change, you still see sensor dust. Pose change, you still see sensor dust. So that again is on me, that's on the camera. And again, June of 2021. Last set, a darker wall, you see here, let's look up to the left, spot, spot, down here, spot, move it over, light spots on the upper left. Come over to the right, they get even darker. Tons and tons of sensor dust, even in the middle. Now, some of these are marks on the wall. And again, I like to use tape as a reference when I put in a, a chair or a stool. Don't look at those as much, but pay attention to the sensor dust. And then even if I had her change outfits and we keep the same wall, bang. Again, sensor dust, sensor dust. It is everywhere. So while some folks would say that, you know, you could take that sheet of paper and just, you know, change your f-stop, you know, open it up enough you can see the sensor dust. As you can see with me, I have them right here on, on these images. I don't think I showed you this date, did I? This was August of last year. That just gives you an idea of, of um, how long it's been. I've never cleaned, I've never cleaned the, uh, the sensor uh, on, on this camera. I'm going to do it today for you guys. Um, but clearly, I had indicators that I should have done that all along. So. Let's talk about how we're going to do this. It's pretty easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera. I'm going to take the lens off. Um, with this DSLR, there is a mirror inside. So the process is a little bit different for a DSLR and a mirrorless. Once I get the lens off, I'm going to take this tool here, which is just something that, you know, a bulb that's going to blow air. I'm going to hold it upside down so that gravity helps any loose debris fall out. We're going to blow all inside, careful not to touch anything. After that, I'm going to move the mirror out of the way. I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point. Once the mirror is out of the way, I'm going to use a kit. You can get these kits anywhere. Uh, this one is a uh, digital survivor kit uh, called Eclipse. I bought this at my local camera shop called Richmond Camera. Thank you, guys. This kit runs about $27. You can get any different manufacturers. They're on Amazon, different photo shops. You can get them at B&H. Um, but this kit here, if you get this brand, Type 3 is for a full frame sensor. So you want to make sure you get the right size. What's inside this guy? You get something called the E-Wipe, which is a professional cleaning wipe. The key to using the E-Wipe is it's, it's a one-time use. And when you do it, you only move in one direction. You don't go back and forth because it's designed to pick up debris and take it with it. You get something called the PEC pads. These are lint-free, very useful. I want to say there are 10 in here. Yes, there are 10 in here, and these are 99.999% pure. Really, really good. And they have that sealable thing at the top of the bag, so you can take one out, seal it, go with that. The money items within the kit, though, is going to be this small bottle of fluid, of cleaning fluid, and you get four of these, I don't know if you can see that, four of these, uh, I'll call them wands, and you'll see them up close here when I, when I do the, uh, the cleaning of the lens. 
These are one-time applicators. You use them to take care of the cleaning and you discard them. You get four of them. Neat thing with the case for this one, and here's the case, is it's a nice ruggedized bag. It's got pockets on the outside, pockets on the inside, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a loop on the back that allows you to either put this into the shoulder strap of your bag or one of your bag compartments. Very well made and can be used over and over again. Once you buy the kit, then at that point, all you do is go back and resupply when you need, you know, different devices like this or the liquid. So with that, let me go right into the demo and show you how I'm gonna actually clean the, I'm gonna clean the sensor on my Sony A99 II. Here we go. First thing I'm gonna do obviously is remove the lens, hold it upside down, and I'm just going to blow some air in here. Um, pretty easy. Right now, I'm blowing air where the mirror is. I've got the kit that I just showed you. The liquid is here. The one-time use wand is ready to go. I'm going to open up the mirror now. On the Sony, they released the mirror. There's a little pop on the bottom. Now you can see that the mirror is wide open and I can now see the sensor. That's important because you don't want to take this fluid that I'm applying to the wand and put that on the mirror. That would mess up your camera. So understanding that the mirror has to be moved is important. I'm only applying the liquid on one side of the wand and then it's going to be pretty simple. Slowly put the end of the wand on the sensor wipe in one direction you're going to turn it around wipe in the other direction that's it wand's done mirrors down time to put the lens back on again and once we've done that we are good to go our sensor has been cleaned that's pretty much all we did with this and um, it isn't difficult you just have to understand what to do if you have a mirror, what to do if you don't. The other thing to keep in mind is, for the Sony, like I said, you have to manually release the mirror. But on some ca cameras, like a Canon, it's in the menu system. Every camera will tell you how to get to your sensor and have the mirror removed if you have one. Now, the camera that I'm shooting the video on is mirrorless, so I can't show you right now, but if I were to take the lens off of that, you're looking right at the sensor it is also a full-size sensor, so I could use the same kit to clean that. So the theme that I really wanted to make sure that I, that I drive home, especially for 2022, is be better. Be a better photographer. And that's one of the things that I had to own up to myself. What does that mean? It means that all of last year, you look at all the different topics that we covered, from establishing a good workflow to how to print, how to use off-camera flash, how to contact and work with models. All of these different things were looked at individually so that we could get better at them. Well, in 2022, I think we should be uh, excuse-free. We've been at it too long now. No matter what our levels are, we are better. And I want our focus for this year to be stepping up our game, so to speak. Be a better photographer. And I have a couple notes that I really wanted to go over for that. The first is, when I say be a better photographer, it doesn't have to be across the board, but it should be at least one thing. If there's something that you had a challenge with last year, no matter what it was, it could be studio lighting, off-camera flash, making sure that your uh, focus parameters are, are set so that every, every shot is tack sharp. Whatever it is, find at least one thing and, and focus on that to get better at it. Um, workflow, composition, lighting, shooting, accuracy, editing, any of those categories has multiple subcategories and we could all get better at them. Education and learning. It's really important. Study somebody, you know, uh, read up on things. That's one of the things I've been doing for the last five months to try to better my own photography. And that's when I found out that you don't have to take your camera uh, to a shop. I did look into that to get the sensor clean. They want to keep it for three or four days. They want to charge you a lot more money than the kit cost. And most people go there because they don't have a comfort level with cleaning their sensors. If I can do it, trust me, you can. I was one of those folks that was uncomfortable until I started reading and studying on how to do it. I watched it. I got the right materials. I took my time. And now I'm sensor dust free. More to the point, there's no way I should have gone four or five years with that amount of sensor dust on there. So I took the easy way out by getting rid of those spots in post. Being a better photographer means 
making sure that I do routine and regular cleanings on all my cameras. Um, own your photography. That's the last point that I have. Own your photography. Shoot what you want to shoot. We've talked about this. When you want to shoot it and be proud of it. If you're shooting architecture, landscape, animals, people, whatever the style is, and I've asked this question to a couple friends of mine, you know, who are you shooting for? And it's one thing if you, you're doing a paid job and you're shooting for a client. I get that. But when you're not doing that, who are you shooting for? Be sure to shoot, you know, for yourself. Be true to you, you know, as opposed to shooting for others, shooting for likes, shooting for uh, uh, acceptance. Uh, I think this is the time that we, ha we really have to uh, take a hard look at why we do what we do and shoot for yourself. Um, last thing I'll leave you guys with today is... Appreciate your own photography. You should. It's yours. Be creative. Think outside the box. Stop making excuses and stop looking for easy. It can be fun and it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be easy. Photography is going to be whatever you guys want to make it. As I won't be making as many videos in 2022, again, the underlying theme of the videos that I do make is going to be be a better photographer. I've got a couple of things in the hopper that are coming up over the next few weeks, couple of months, that will hopefully help not just myself, but you as well, become a better photographer. So, Happy New Year again. Thanks for rocking with Rusty Brown Photography. I know I've been out for a while. I am back and glad to be here with you. If you have any questions on how to clean your own sensor, drop a comment or hit me up directly. My contact information is right there. I can help you with that. We can do it together if we need to, but it's something that all of us really need to do. And as always, if you haven't done so already, please give a like and subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. It really does go a long way to helping me create the type of content that I need for the channel. So that's it. Go out there, take some great shots, be a better photographer, stay in touch. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Bye now.